you guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about fat and weight loss. So there are a lot of different opinions when it comes to how much fat you should eat if you're trying to lose weight. And what I'm basing my information on is a low fat, whole food, plant-based diet. If you enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I've got a lot of new videos coming out for you guys. So make sure you stick around for the entire video because after I give you a little bit of information, I'm gonna take this to a very practical level and take you through a full day of eating and what it looks like having different percentages of fat and where you might be caught up and troubleshoot for your own self if you're trying to lose weight where you might just be having too much fat and just reducing it a little bit is going to help you get the results that you want. When you say low fat, people generally freak out. They think that you need fat for your brain, you need fat for your hormones, and you absolutely do. I am not saying low fat equals no fat in your diet. You need fat. We do need fat for our brain function. We do need fat for our hormones and for a number of other things in our body. But the amount of fat that we need is way less than most people think. So there's a couple terms that I just want to define for you guys as I go through this video. The first one is macronutrients. And macronutrients are what whole foods are made out of. So they all have a ratio of carbs, proteins, and fats. Even things like oatmeal has 14% fat, brown rice has 5% fat, broccoli has seven to 8% of its calories coming from fat. So all whole foods still have some form of carbohydrate, protein, and fat. So you can include all of those kinds of food in your diet and stay low fat without ever thinking, oh, I'm adding fat to my day. And then the next term that I want to define is overt fat. And overt fats are foods whose calorie content is dominated mostly by fat. So if you think about avocados, nuts, seeds, coconut meat, olives, those are all whole food sources that would be considered overt fats. So what exactly is high fat versus low fat based on? We're basing it on what people have been eating throughout human history and the fat percentage that the normal human has been able to access all the way up until you know there's been so many processed foods available. And so through the majority of human history, it's almost been impossible to get more than 15% of daily calories from fat because think about it, before we had Vitamixes and food processors and grocery stores that sold all of the nuts shelled and ready to go, people were out there in the fields picking one nut at a time. I don't know if you've ever ever tried to crush a walnut, it takes a lot of freaking time. And by the time you've had probably three or four walnuts that you've had to crack yourself, you're like, okay, I'm done, I'm done with this. So you can see how even whole plant fats are so much more readily available. They're peeled for us, they're ready to go. They've been picked off the tree. The seeds have been separated. Okay, so establishing that normal human consumption of fat uh, from daily calories is between 10 and 15%. So I'm saying it's a low fat whole food plant-based diet, but really it's a normal fat if you look at it in the grand scheme of history and what we've been able to consume as humans over time. So just to put that into perspective, on average, the standard American diet is comprised of 35% fat or higher, which, you know, then you can really see the connection between all of the obesity that we have, especially here in America, but in a lot of affluent countries around the world. So you can say 10% to 20% fat on a daily basis is really a normal kind of fat diet, not necessarily a low fat diet, but it seems low because of the regular standard American diet that is eaten by so many people on average. So overwhelming scientific data in this field shows that 10 to 20% fat consumption per day is considered low fat. This is not only incredibly healthy, it's protective against disease and really ideal if you want to see fat loss and weight loss in your everyday diet. And conversely, high fat diets are associated with more disease and more obesity. So let's talk about does eating fat make you fat? Whole food carbohydrates are our body's preferred method of fuel. Now, Carbs can turn into fat, but it's a more costly process. The fat that we eat can be directly stored as fat stores in our body, specifically on our stomach and our thighs, yay. So if you want to really lose weight, it's very important that you be in a calorie deficit. But even if you eat the same number of calories coming from carbs versus fat, you will actually store the fat calories more. There's a study called the Vermont Prison Study which actually shows this in action. They gave a number of prisoners 100,000 extra calories coming from carbs to gain 35 pounds, and they gave 40,000 calories coming from fats to gain 35 pounds. The excess calories coming from carbs will cause you to gain weight, but it's much easier to gain the weight from fat calories. So the takeaway from that study is that weight gain is much easier when you're having excess calories from fat. And high fat foods have more calories per gram. So a high fat food has nine calories per gram and a carb food, like a whole plant carb, has four calories per gram. 
So having more fat in the diet translates to having more calories overall. So now let's take this down to a practical level. I'm gonna show you a sample kind of food menu for a day and what it looks like with varying degrees of fat and what that equals percentage wise and calories wise. And bonus, a lot of you guys have asked me how to eat this way on a budget and it's totally doable. So I chose a really simple budget friendly menu. So I'm gonna take you through a full day. By the way, this is extremely filling. You're getting lots of whole plant foods and it's really easy to do. Then I'm gonna take you through a couple variations and show you the difference with the calorie count. So for breakfast, I'm doing one cup of cooked steel cut oats half a cup of almond milk, one cup of blueberries, one full banana, and a sprinkling of cinnamon. For lunch, I'm doing a giant salad. I'm doing six cups of mixed greens, one tomato, one carrot, half a cup of red cabbage, a quarter cup of mushrooms, and about a half a cup of sunflower microgreens, which by the way, you would think had fat, but they actually have none. They're chock full of protein and a really, really great option. In addition to the salad, we're doing one full cup of brown rice and one full cup of black beans. For a snack, I'm doing a green apple with cinnamon, which actually sounds very boring, but tastes amazing together. And then for dinner, I've got a really nice hearty bowl of brown rice pasta. I did a cup of brown rice pasta. I did a cup of a homemade marinara with things like zucchini and carrot and mushrooms in there, diced tomatoes and and some tomato paste served with two cups of broccoli. And then for an after dinner snack, you could have something like an extra banana and a couple of dates. That's about 1800 calories, 80% of those calories coming from carbs, 12% coming from protein and 7% coming from fat. That's a full day of eating. You're really not feeling like you're missing out on anything. So the first variation keeps you actually under the 10%. And while this is extremely filling, if you wanted to add some more fat, you absolutely have room for that and you can still lose weight easily. Now let's go back in and add a little bit more fat. So going back to the breakfast, I'm having everything I had before, the oatmeal, the banana, the blueberry, the almond milk, the cinnamon. And now I'm just gonna add a tablespoon of chia seeds, which is a very wonderful source of omega-3 fatty acid. You want to have chia seeds or flax seeds in your daily diet. So I would definitely recommend throwing this in, whether it be on oatmeal or in a smoothie or even in your water. In a day, you're gonna really get a lot of great benefits from adding chia seeds. And chia seeds are a wonderful addition to anybody's diet, whether you're trying to lose weight or not. Okay, so let's move into the lunch portion. Now I'm gonna have everything I had before, but I'm just going to add a quarter of an avocado, which again, is not a bad addition. For my snack, I'm going to add in a tablespoon of peanut butter to that apple and cinnamon, and I'm gonna keep my dinner absolutely the same as in the first example. That roughly translates to 2,050 calories with my carb percentage coming in at 76%, my protein coming in at 11%, and my fat consumption coming in at 13%. So we're still totally in a great place. Now you're getting around 200 extra calories if you added in those extra fats. So to reiterate, in that second option, I added in a tablespoon of chia seed, a quarter of an avocado to my salad, and a tablespoon of peanut butter to my snack. Now coming up to the third example, and this is a place where we're gonna go over that recommended 10 to 20% of daily fat calories. If you're not seeing any kind of weight loss on a whole food plant-based diet, you might wanna just check yourself for a couple days, track what you're eating. You might be surprised at how much fat you're getting in your day. So the differences would be, we're gonna keep the breakfast the same, we're gonna keep the chia seeds, but we're also gonna add a tablespoon of almond butter to our oatmeal, which makes it taste amazing. But now you're packing in more fat, thus more calories. For for the lunch, I would add another quarter of an avocado. So in total, you have half of a medium avocado. And then the dressing, which is an easy place that people trip up, I would do the same balsamic vinegar, but I would add a tablespoon of oil, which tastes amazing. But right there, you're getting probably an extra 120 calories just from that tablespoon of olive oil alone. I'm gonna keep my snack of peanut butter and apple and cinnamon absolutely the same. And then for my dinner, when I made the marinara sauce before, I used no oil. I used vegetable broth to saute the onions and the garlic. This time, I'm going to be adding two tablespoons of olive oil to saute the onions and the garlic to get my sauce going. And the difference is quite significant. We're coming in total on that third option, 2,650 calories. So that's a big jump. I've added chia seeds and almond butter to my oatmeal. I've added the extra avocado and the olive oil to my salad. And I've added two tablespoons of olive oil to get my marinara sauce going. 
that gives us around 2,650 calories for that day. 61% carbohydrates, 10% protein, and 28% fat. Now these are not big differences. You can see that it would be really easy to just think, oh, it's just a tablespoon of oil. What's it gonna do? It makes a big difference on average. So in this daily example, I never got rid of any of the whole foods. I just kind of, altered the chia seeds, the almond butter, the peanut butter, and the olive oil. And you can see by adding those things, you're getting too much fat if you're trying to lose weight. So what is the takeaway here? Most people don't think that they're eating high fat in the slightest, but track it on something like Chronometer or MyFitnessPal for a couple days and check out your fat percentage. If you feel like you're really struggling to lose weight, this could be a culprit for you. So what are you supposed to eat instead? all of the things that keep you nice and full. It comes right back around to low calorie density, sticking with fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes and beans and tubers. Those are the things that are gonna keep you full, not the added olive oil, not the added vegan margarine, not the added nut butters. Eating those low calorie dense foods, which are going to be the healthier choices, which are going to be the most nutrients per bite, and you can get healthy as you're eating them. So just to summarize, you wanna keep your fat anywhere from 10% to 20%. And if you're seeing not a lot of change at 20%, try 15. And if you're not seeing it at 15, try 10. This is something that I personally will always go to and check out first. It's really easy to allow the healthier but still higher fat, higher calorie dense foods to creep back into your day. And that's honestly when I'm seeing no weight loss progress, that's the first place I look in my diet because I like the way those taste. But you know what? You can have smaller amounts or you can even omit them for a time and you will see weight loss happen without compromising the fat that you need to help your body function at its optimal level. So that's how much fat I would recommend eating in a day if you want to lose weight on a low fat we know normal fat now, whole food, a plant-based diet. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions or comments that you have down below. I really love talking to you and that's the only way that I get to do that. Please give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed this information and subscribe to my channel for more videos to come. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one, bye.